In about 24 hours, we'll be jumping in the Jaguar, we'll be headed to Georgia. If you guys watched the last video, you know that I'll be bringing the Jaguar to Copart in Georgia to be listed for sale. So for what could be a stupid cheap price, all you guys at home can enjoy a supercharged V8 with some nitrous goodness. And don't worry about all this junk, anything that's not Jaguar related like this right here, I will be clearing out before the sale. So right now in the description box below, you guys can find the live auction link to the Jaguar on Copart's site. And be sure to mark down in your calendar the date that this Jaguar does go for sale, because on that day we'll be having a live stream where I'll be having a few giveaways, I'll be taking phone calls from you guys at home, and hopefully having a few other YouTubers join me. It should be a really good time, and then we'll see how cheap the Jaguar actually sells for. There's one other link I'm going to throw in the description box and that is the link for Copart's 2018 rebuild challenge. A lot of you guys have written me telling me that you've bought your very own project car at Copart and that's what the rebuild challenge is all about. If you take some pictures or maybe some videos and document the process of you rebuilding the car, you can enter to win up to a $5,000 grand prize. There's also runner up prizes. So it's just a really neat contest to be a part of and there are so many cool submissions. Chris from B is for Build won a few years back, and I think he actually won a few years in a row. I really want to thank Copart for its continued sponsorship of this channel and the opportunity to sell this car at its Tifton, Georgia location. Now, before I go and drop it off, I'm going to get it all cleaned up so it looks nice in its photos. One of the cool things that's on this car you can't see is the ceramic coating. I ceramic coated the entire car and you could see when I wet down the car, it all just beads off. Now I ceramic coated the entire car with the exception of the rear deck here, which when I finished cleaning the car entirely, I'll go ahead and I will do the deck. You see the beating up on the roof, you see beating up, but on the rear hatch, look, it doesn't beat up at all. Not to mention, there's a ton of dirt that is stuck to the paint. Now this will all come off, but one huge benefit of the ceramic coating is if you look, there's no huge dirt spots anywhere. Of course, this car has been parked outside for the last month or so, and this ceramic coating has really held everything up really well. Wow, look at those headlights after the ceramic coating. They look glossy, they look brand new, really. Shout out to my buddy Alex over at Legit Streetcars for that idea. He just did a video talking about ceramic coating your headlights. At this point, pretty much the entire car has been ceramic coated. If you're interested in the same stuff I used, I will link it in the description box below. However, what I wanna do right now is give you an entire interior and exterior condition report of the car, kinda like if you ordered your own auction inspection. While this car is in the garage and under some lights, let's talk about the overall paint quality and condition. This is an enamel paint job I got done a couple months ago, so it's pretty much new paint. I would anticipate that it lasts a very long time. Now the quality of the paint job is okay. You guys have seen there's a lot of overspray pretty much everywhere. A lot under these fender liners here. There's a bunch in the front grill area underneath here. They hit that intercooler in there. Besides the overspray though, the paint condition is obviously excellent because it's only a couple months old. Now, as far as the body goes, it is also not perfect. I'm gonna show you a few spots one of them being right up here on the roof. You can probably see in the light that little bit of ripple there. That's where my amateur body work came into place. There was a dent right there. It definitely looks better and you can hardly tell from a few feet away, but up close, there's a little wrinkle in it. The most notable wrinkle in this car is down here on the door. Now, again, it's gonna be tough to capture it, but you can see right there where it's a little wavy, right here. I tried to work it out a little bit and then fill it in, and this is tough because there's a body line that runs right along here. So this is probably the worst one on the car, although again, it's substantially better than it was before. And last but not least is right here by the gas cap. Again, a little wrinkle. Tough to see, but it is there. As far as the wheels, tires, and brakes go, you guys know that I painted all these wheels. I touched up any scratches on them while I was in there, so there's no curb rash on any of the wheels. The calipers are also painted red. The tire condition is pretty decent. There's some decent brake pad left in the rear, and there's brand new brakes 
on the front. You guys might remember I did those in a video. So when it comes to exterior condition, this car is a 14 year old car, but with the new paint job, whether you like it or not, it looks pretty darn good for 14 years old. When it comes to the interior condition of the car, it's overall good. You know, I've never been a fan of this color leather seats. These are like a lighter gray seat. The rear seats don't have any rips or stains. These actually are in really good shape for 14 years old. This cup holder is stuck open for whatever reason. So you got a permanent cup holder right there. When we go to the front, it could just use a major cleaning. This seat right here has all my camera equipment on it, but it has no tears, no rips. Again, in very good condition for 14 years old. Of course, the driver's seat is what's gonna have the most wear. And so no major rips, although it does have a tiny little hole right there. And it has a couple of cracks on the lower part of it. That's about it. The last thing here in the interior I wanna show you is the nav screen. It looks like it's got some sort of stress or sun marks behind the screen itself. So you can still touch everything on the screen. Everything still works perfect but there is some unsightly stress marks back there. When it comes to the running condition, of course, I could just show you underneath the hood and you can listen to a running here. Oh, let's get back here and crank this bad boy open and I'll show you how it runs from the driver's seat. Now the goal with this car was to have 500 horsepower under $5,000 and I spent right around $4,600, $4,700 and I never actually took it to a dyno. So I have the next best thing. It's a RaceLogic performance box. This is basically a performance data logger. So you've probably seen this on Motor Trend before and you've probably seen it a handful of other places, but this will record things like your zero to 60 time and it will actually give us a horsepower rating. So first what I'm going to do is run the performance box on the horsepower mode and when we do a standstill stop to acceleration it will give us an approximate horsepower rating. Then we'll do a 0 to 60. After I do those I'll flip the nitrous switch on and then we'll do it with nitrous and see what we can get. Alright that's 7 miles an hour and we're getting 246 horsepower. tried to get a horsepower reading on this twice we've got right in the mid 200s 246 245 and that's not very good even at a wheel horsepower rating say that you go extreme and you factor in a 20 percent drivetrain loss you're still talking right around 300 brake horsepower two one For a zero to 60 time, it did six and a half seconds. That's with street tires and that's with rolling on the throttle and really high heat and humidity here in Florida. So I'm gonna take that as actually a pretty good zero to 60 for stock. I've got the nitrous on. We're gonna accelerate a little bit and see if we can't get that number up. Three, two, one. All right, what does it say? 207, well it definitely didn't feel any different. So guys, unfortunately we have a problem. I think we're out of nitrous. <laughs> so when I hit the switch, I hit the button, there's clearly no difference. I went and felt the bottle on the back, it feels empty. I kinda did a few tests, everything is hooked up right, the solenoids are clicking, but it's just shooting extra gas and that's doing no good. So the verdict's out on the 500 horsepower under $500 Jaguar project and the verdict is, well it's a fail but not an epic fail, hear me out. You put the car on a real dyno, they're gonna hold it into higher gear and run it all the way to redline. The car should make in excess of 300 wheel horsepower at that point. There's been plenty of reports and dyno sheets on a stock Jaguar S Type R because this car's been out long enough that people have put them on dynos. Those wheel horsepower numbers are translating to more than 400 horsepower at the crank. Add in the 75 shot of nitrous or up it to 100 shot of nitrous. And well, I think you got your 500 horsepower. That zero to 60 in six and a half seconds was my first time doing it. So I'm definitely gonna give it a thumbs up. I think that number can be much better. And when the nitrous bottle is filled up, obviously that will shave even more time off of it. So even though I failed, one of you guys could end up the winner. The winner of the car at Copart, of course. This car is going to be auctioned off 
as a pure sale, meaning no reserve in Georgia. All of you guys can bid on it. Make sure you add the car to your watch list when you're on Copart's site. And hey, even if you're not remotely interested in the blue Jaguar, Copart has a huge inventory to select from. Well, guys, in the next video, I'll be seeing you from Copart in Georgia. I hope you stay tuned for that. If you enjoyed this one, be sure to hit that like button. Any questions whatsoever, you can find my contact information in the description box below. Thanks a lot for watching, and I will catch you very soon. Mm -hmm.